sacks today. Cross. Samuel stacked up. How about that for the defense now? They know they got to get it turned around quickly. Number 49. I saw Sharif Floyd there also. Loss of two. Floyd has had a very good game. Howard's had a good game. Called Bostic a lot. I've been impressed with Jalen Watkins, number 14. He's had a gotten beat a couple times, but that's the way it is. He's played a good game. Second down, 12. First down, Michael Taylor with the tackle. Well, this is the advantage that Aaron Murray has in the game that Brantley can't do. Murray gives you one more possibility. Coverage downfield, he ends up getting something out of it, but nothing was there. Michael Taylor making the play. Rush yards today, look at this. Murray, 42, and Florida. And, of course, uh, remind you again that in college football, sacks... And there have been six of them come off the rushing total. It's third down. Aaron Murray has missed his last nine. Blitz tipped incomplete. Oh, there's a flag. Yep. I, I will bet that Marcus Roberson has his arm on the receiver as he goes with his left arm to knock it down. Let's see. Does he put his right arm? His yes. right That's arm in the hooks up. Number five of the day play. Penalty will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Yeah, that Michael Bennett, and he came and took his right arm on the play. Florida's penalties and turnovers. Watch his right arm hook him. Had his jersey with one arm, then his right arm on the back, and that's what that back judge sees. 13 penalties for the Gators today, referencing the 16 that uh, they committed against Tennessee. That was the second highest total in Florida history. They're 13 for the day. High formation again. Crowell is back in there. Dances right. Down the sidelines, out of bounds with another Bulldog first down. Pressed it to the line of scrimmage exactly the way he's supposed to do. Don't give up on it. Follow, follow, and then take it outside. Follow your big fullback. Bruce Biggins that time. That's exactly how you have to do it. 3.30 to go. Both teams, one timeout remaining. Remember, clock keeps going even though he does go out of bounds. Take it all the way down. Under two seconds on the play clock before you snap it, Aaron Murray. Lead everything you can out of it. Yes, indeed. Here's Crowell. And the clock will continue. Ronald Powell makes the tackle for the Gators. This is the key stop for Florida. This is the game stop because on third down, Will Muschamp can use his last timeout. So after second down, he's got to let it run. Some coaches like to take the timeout after second down and tempt the offense with throwing a pass. Well, Muschamp gazes up at the scoreboard. 2.33 to go. Timeout. Georgia, that's their last. Well, Mark Richt, 101 wins at Georgia, but eight losses to Florida. His overall record in the championship years, 01 to 05, 52 and 13. He won three SEC East titles, two SEC championships. A footnote to that, each time they appeared in the championship game, they had lost to Florida in this game. Still, everything going really smoothly, 30 and 9, 11 and 5 versus ranked teams. 
2006, 7, and 8, and then the last couple of years have been, uh, have been tough. There's two groups of people that are pulling for Georgia. Okay, there's the Georgia fans, right? There's the Boise State fans, right. and then there's one guy, Tim Brando, wants this, the Georgia wickets. He wants to fly in the ointment thing. We got uh, uh, two groups and Brando. Uh, most career head wins, Vince Dooley, of course, was 17 and 7 with one tie in his years in Georgia. They owned Florida in the 80s, but then this guy Spurrier came in in 1990 and it flipped everything. Second down and nine. I cannot believe they're going to throw the ball. Could feel like a quarterback draw. Side. Wow! Uh, Chris okay. Conley! I guess when you're 2 and 8 against Florida, you're willing to let it go. Because that's the whole game right there. This is incomplete. Remember, Florida will have the last time out. Good coverage. Stop on the outside. And against Jalen Watkins, it was beat on the fourth down play. Conley, a true freshman comes up with the catch. Remember, he's only playing because Malcolm Mitchell is not. What a call by Mark Rick and Mike Bobo. And it ends a string of nine consecutive incomplete thrown by Aaron Murray. Now the clock under two. Incredible, aggressive call. An incredibly aggressive call. To the 15, it's Samuel again. Number 22. Florida has called its last timeout. I have to say, I mean, I said it before the call, I, I never would have guessed that. It's not like Florida wasn't playing coverage. They had the guy right there. That's as aggressive a call at the end of a game we've seen. And I think when you go 3-18 and 18 and 2-8, and eight, you make those type of calls. Now time for the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. Here's Scott Howard of the Georgia Radio Network. Second and goal, handoff, Richard Samuel, big hole, first, touchdown! He would not be denied, he wanted it on the last play. Well, Scott Howard, who for a long time was the sidekick of the legendary Larry Munson, now retired, how can we come to this game without thinking of Larry Munson? Well, <laughs> I, I don't know, I just sit here and, and marvel at... at what Georgia did right there. That that is as gutsy a call as I've seen because I'm telling you, if this thing that was incomplete, okay, and then they get stopped right after, there would be so much second guessing of Mark Rick and Florida run the run down there and scored. But that's what you do. You got to make tough decisions no matter what we say or the fans say, and he made a tough decision incorrectly. Crowell, the freshman running back, goes right, but now the Gators cannot stop the clock. Will Muschamp insisting this week that there was way too much ink being wasted in stories about him as a graduate of Georgia coming back to play the Bulldogs in his first year as the head coach. Muschamp, of course, his dad Larry, a coach, school administrator, grew up in Rome, Georgia. Then the family moved to Gainesville, lived there 10 years. He went back home and... Now, his mom and dad, by the way, are not at the game. They decided to watch it on television. This should take it under 20 seconds for fourth down if Georgia holds on to the ball here. Samuel. It should be, by the time fourth down happens, it should be under 20 seconds. And remember for Georgia, it was all in front of them. You see the stats for Florida. For Georgia, the story was in front of them. When they lost to South Carolina, they had to win out now. They had to beat Florida, Auburn, Kentucky, and they still need help. South Carolina has to lose. Remember, South Carolina is at Tennessee tonight, at Arkansas next week, and Florida in two weeks. They'll snap it right before it gets to 20, 17 rather. Up the middle, Samuel Baldwin. It's no 
touchdown, but they don't need it. Samuel limping as he heads to the bench. He stopped at the one. What an effort by Richard Samuel in this ballgame. So many players just giving it their all, including Aaron Murray. And there's the hug. That's his son, Zach. Two other sons, John and David, the daughter, Anya. His wife, Catherine, by the way, is not here because Catherine has entered nursing school back home in Athens. Well, I hope she passed her test tomorrow as well as Mark passed his tonight. She has a big test Monday. She's studying for it. Our player of the game, no doubt here, six tackles, four of them for sacks. One forced fumble, the fifth player in Georgia history with four or more sacks in a game. Richard Samuel being assisted off the field. His last carry cinched it. Bulldogs win it for the first time since 2007. The final 24-20. For Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson, I'm Vern Lundquist saying so long from Jacksonville. The final score in the thriller. Georgia 24, Florida 20. Make sure to join us next week in Tuscaloosa, LSU in Alabama. The Chief Post Game Show after these messages and a word from your local station.